Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode with Jane Billum. Well, I'm picking up Jane because just off camera I said something in it. Oh, it was joking. And uh, we'll, I suppose we might bring it up later. Maybe not. I'm going to make sure I talk so much that I forget about it. Yeah, um, let's do that. <laughs> so welcome, Jane. I love it when you're a guest. But you're not really a guest now. This is like co-hosting. It's like Good Morning Britain. Oh, my God. I think that makes me aim and home. Who does that make you? I don't know. I don't watch morning TV, Richard. No, in the sea, that. being productive. Oh, uh, OK. <laughs> Are you, uh, well, I, <laughs> I don't, don't, is it Kate Carraway now? Yeah, I don't we'll know. Do yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> this week's got a really kind of deep focus on it. It's about saying yes to opportunities. And we were just talking about, like, what does that really mean? And in my mind, it's like, it is literally what it says on the team, which is like, say yes to things because good things happen. But what if we're not noticing the opportunities that are in front of us? Like, how do we start to notice uh, what the opportunities are, what we should say yes to, and perhaps what sometimes we should say no to, which is probably just as important. When I was thinking about this, I kind of think of it from a from the viewpoint or lens of the 20 year old rich who was just finding his way with work I came out of I won't bore you with the full story but I was coming away from university having children so it's quite important to start getting start working because with money um and I went down I took uh, the my stepson to school and there was a notice on the on the on, oh, this is the thing the, the dad guilt I was late so I was dropped doing that horrible guilty walk through the school office. I'm very off. familiar with that walk. <laughs> so, and as I walked in on the notice board behind, there was a there was a leaflet saying about these summer play schemes because it was it must have been June time, maybe very early July. And I was I was looking to do something working with children because my careers person at uni I'm not even sure they exist anymore I was thinking that even then I was like look you know I kind of feel like teaching's the thing I'm not sure like but that that was kind of was on my mind and she was like have you worked with children before I was like no she went are you sure you want to be a teacher so I knew I needed to go and get experience anyway so I phoned them up so I dropped him off signed him in dropped him off picked up the phone and phoned the number and they were like oh no I'm really sorry all the spaces are gone. I was like, oh, such a shame, but it makes sense because, you know, it was starting in a few weeks' time. Um, look, I'm so-and-so. I'm looking for something to work with children because my long-term aim is you know, to work with uh, children at some point. And we end up having a conversation on the phone. and But that was it. And then about four hours later, they phoned me back. I was like, hi, oh, you spoke to someone earlier on. You're looking for a job. Can you come and see us? And I was like, yeah. So, And I didn't drive, so I was on my bike. I didn't have a car then. So I was like, I come and see, we went to see him the next day, cycled down to the other side of town to me in a, it was, an, it was actually an early years project, which I didn't know what that was at that point, but in the local early years project, and I had this lovely little centre, but in a very deprived area of the city. I had my bike stolen, but let's just say that that was the only negative. So I came out, my bike had gone, but I'd got a job. They were like, yeah, come and work for the summer. I didn't know how I was going to get there. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that led on to just opportunities I won't we'll, we'll, I'll probably come back and share those with you but that one moment changed like the course of everything that happened for the next 10 years so that was the and I've always been a little bit more open to saying yes I would say like say yes because it will probably make a good story or yeah. say yes because it might lead somewhere or you know those kind of things but I remember as a as a young, I suppose a young man then, mm -hmm. that felt quite pivotal and also quite important. Like when they phone you and you go, oh, yeah, okay, give it a go. So yeah, that's probably my first one. What about yourself? I I think I held myself back quite a lot, actually. Like I I am always being quite ambitious, but I, I think I've had quite a lot of blocks. Um, I think I've always had to be coaxed to take up not to not to take them because I've said yes when they've been presented but I haven't necessarily gone looking for them um and I think that's why we have such a good partnership in some ways because you kind of see that and mm -hmm. you kind of prov provide opportunities for me and then kind of make sure that I, I take them I think I talked about that quite extensively 
in the first kind of long long podcast that I did where I basically spilled my guts you said come on come and talk to about to me about international tuition and it ended up me just spilling my guts for an hour and a half um about my journey but yeah I think I've always had some blocks about kind of not seeing them or or maybe not seeing them I don't know just kind of like being in my own bubble sometimes I think um and that that's that may seem a bit strange um for people watching this because obviously they see a lot of opportunities for me at the moment um with the international tutors who thrive course um but I've definitely been guilty of getting in my own head like absolutely um and I've always kind of needed a bit of encouragement to to say you know you should go for this or you should go for this promotion or um, and I am working on that um, by taking opportunities to work on myself effectively, which hasn't been easy. But when those opportunities have been presented um, with like working with like Claire Pope Vale or working with Claire Davies, like that has been really useful for me just to get a better understanding about myself and what my blocks are and then overcoming them, I think. Um, I don't know. Does that surprise you? Yeah, but obviously I know you quite well, yeah. so I know some of this this stuff already. And yeah, it does, and it always surprises me. You know that surprises me. I'm like, I can't believe you think this way because when you talk, it's at a very high level. You come across really well, really confident. You definitely know your stuff, which usually brings with it confidence, doesn't it? Particularly in yourself. And I know that we're really good at masking because this is what we generally do. I'm not saying that even the most confident people will obviously we all be yeah. unanimous confident don't have imposter syndrome but often you don't get to see it and so often what we see so if you listen to a podcast or watch a podcast or there's people that you connect with that are kind of in the next echelon which we should be doing you know we should be listening to these people it can come across as like oh my god they really know what they're doing mm-hmm. and yeah they do but they also have doubts they also do have the self-doubts that creep in they're the same as anybody else it's just the level that they're working at, it, it brings them bigger problems, right? So there's more things. They don't worry about the things that we worry about. In the same way, we probably don't worry about the same things we did three or four years ago anymore. We just have grown beyond it. Yeah, the problems are still there. But like, okay, it doesn't actually matter. Or they do matter, but I can cope with it because I've got the right tools now. Mm-hmm. I think Jen Gottlieb spoke about that in Atomicon, didn't she? She said, like, we don't become fearless. We just fear less. Yeah. Like, and that was really that. powerful when she said that. That was that was really... And just surrounding yourself with the kind of thinkers like that can kind of raise you and make you see the opportunities around you as well, isn't it? I don't know. But he, yeah, but he, yeah, exactly. And when you know that that's how people feel, whatever, wherever we see them, and I think... Part of the issue is because everything feels hierarchi- hi- hierarchical in that we think, oh, we put these person on top and this they're still just a person, they're still a human being. They still go through the same emotions we do. We just put them on a ped, we put them on the pedestal. Most of the really good ones don't put themselves on a pedestal and they're really yeah. honest about the stuff they feel. But because they're honest, there are times when it can come across as like they're being arrogant because they're like, well, you know what? Yeah, when I scaled to 25 million or this, and you're like, okay, 25 million, great. But actually, you do need to take it on board that there was a time when they weren't and they was at the same stage as us or anybody else who was just starting. Mm-hmm. I think the, the the power of saying yes is intertwined with self-trust because you. I've had people say yes in the moment to mm-hmm. let's use the podcast and then go away and go, oh, I've got nothing to talk about. I don't know what I'm going to say. And you go, I know you've got loads to talk about, but also I'm not going to force you to do it. Because if you are that nervous, you're not going to be able to share in the best way. And so we just postpone it or we just pause it for a while. And even I've seen, I've heard other people talk about similar journeys to me. Look, you know, I'm talking about working for an early years project and it changed the, the next 10 years. But I've seen people go, I wasn't going to go to that event. I did. And then I won the retreat and suddenly I was away for four weeks with this person. And now like the power of saying yes, because people would say that's lucky. I don't. I'm like, no, you've taken a chance. You've put yourself in that space to allow it to happen. That yes was the most powerful thing. So and it I, is always the chain, sorry, Richard. It yeah. is always the chain reaction, isn't it? Like in, in just taking that chance. Yeah. Um, like absolutely. Cause I you asked me to come on the podcast and 
it took me about two or three months to um to say yes um and the reason that I did say yes is because a very very close friend of mine had taken a huge risk um and she was a major major inspiration um she um I don't know if you watched the great pottery throwdown but my best friend who I referenced in the first podcast she asked me to be a referee for her um and that was in the June um so I had to speak with the production company it was all a huge huge secret I literally could wow. not tell another soul about it um and she wanted to show her kids that um she could do hard things she was a former art teacher um lots of reasons why she'd been a stay-at-home mom just like me um and just had rediscovered her love of ceramics and took a huge chance applied to go on the show um I spoke to her gave her the reference to the production company she got in and I was like do you know what if my mate can go on national tv and put herself through all of that to show her kids that she can do hard things or just to do it for her you know it was something really special I can go on Richard Carl's podcast you know and I said yes to you a couple of months later after you just asked me and the chain reaction of that one yes has been absolutely incredible yeah. um and the same for her as well but just surrounding yourself with really inspiring people I think is is really good so I think that initial yes it obviously did come from me because I had to do it I had to put myself through it but mm -hmm. just having her was a bit of a catalyst there um was amazing she went on to win it as well it which is just history. phenomenal yeah. like and I think just there's a few of my friends who've been in that situation recently there are three of us me included my two other friends they've both taken career breaks both thought their lives were basically over because they'd stepped away from a job a really high profile career really successful career but then gone back in and are absolutely smashing it like like you would not believe like the levels at which they're achieving mm. um and just being around those people is so inspiring like I've had really good conversations with them and just like we're all kind of like just willing each other on like not in a competitive way because we're all in very different industries but just seeing other people who you admire but also have been in very similar situations to you and are making it work and not only making it work but absolutely flying is really really special um and that is the power of yes isn't it just not being afraid to take yeah. a bit of a chance and take a bit of a risk but that that sits the other side doesn't it like of any, I think of any decision actually and I, I, you're, it, I think it's always beneficial to take stock you don't have to say yes straight away like for example like in the moment it's like no I don't think I'm going to podcast that's probably the right decision at that time but then to go away and feel that inspiration to come back and you bring that energy into it yeah. then you know it's it's okay what I what I found on a personal level from I'm thinking back to when I was 20 and I said yes to that one opportunity and then the people I met along the way that become absolutely pivotal in the way I was as a professional with working with parents, working with really young children, um, right up to working with within schools and sort of supporting teachers and SLTs with whatever it may, it may have been until I was in my, until I turned 30. I think that one moment then allowed me to say yes to other things. Yeah. Had, I don't know what I would have done if I'd have said no, because I was kind of a bit, and that's the other thing we don't know, and we could always catastrophize things, but there was nothing else happening then. I was like, oh, there was nothing else that was really sparking me into, into another, maybe a different path, whether it was career-wise or not. Um, and I was quite gutted at the end of the phone call when it was like, no, we haven't got anything, which has probably prompted me to start talking. Mm -hmm. Nervous chat, probably talking mm -hmm. rubbish again. But whatever it was, it just made, I don't know. And but th but those people I spoke to, they became friends because they were they were quite pivotal in that in those first sort of three or four years and was around a lot and I was around them a lot too. Um you had mentioned them about just being around people who are inspirational. 
it doesn't just for me have to be around be around people who are inspirational but it's people who want you to do well yeah yeah yeah. yes I, I do want to be around inspirational people I want to and I want to inspire others as well like that's kind of like the journey I think that we're all on but knowing you've got people who are like want you to to take the risk are okay with you taking the risk and because it it can feel really uncomfortable when you're saying like, I'm going to go and do this thing. Or I'm going to say, yes, this thing's happened. I want to do it. Is it okay? I feel like I've got to. And you know, someone's going to go, yeah, of course it is. Go for it. I believe in you. And sometimes that's it. And the, something happened at the conference last week and it was the opening. I think it was just after IU. Sharon sort of got up and was introduced in the day. Or maybe it was before IU came on and said like, look, if they're here, if the people here delivering the workshops, they're in front of you today, they're good. End of. And I was like, oh, that's a bit of a, that was quite powerful. And it meant quite a lot because it meant you could step towards whatever you needed to be like, whether you, was a, whether you felt like you were performing. There were certain times I, you kind of do, don't you, and you're at the front. And in a genuine way, but you just kind of put all your nerves to one side because you go, okay, Sharon thinks this is going to be good. It's going to be good. Or whoever the leader would be um le le you know le leading the conference or whatever event it may be but that passing over of trust is quite important too and the camaraderie between speakers at that conference was amazing it was really magical too like every we were all checking in with each other and you know mm. Arthur popped in to my kind of room before I got started and kind of helped me set some things up and Alana popped in to say hello and it was all just really lovely and supportive because everybody wanted you to do well you know you and I was you know can I film some footage for your socials and kind of coming in and me distracting you and and running out apologizing <laughs> afterwards but it was all just really lovely wasn't it it was people want you to do well mm. um and I think sometimes you know people can when I had my I, my friend actually came to visit me like the day after the conference so we went out for a drink um which wasn't great time but it's always lovely to say yeah and I'd be talking to her and I'm like mate like you are you're just so inspiring and she's like no I'm not I'm not you know it people don't realize the power that they have over you you know um the the kind of you know relationship that we have is really powerful because we kind of um spare each other on we're there for accountability like we're there for ideas we're there for a sounding board we're there just to listen sometimes and that's really lovely as well. Um, and that is, you know, all from me saying yes to one yeah, opportunity, absolutely. really, which is yeah. so the the kind of the the chain reaction of events is you can't ever comprehend what that could lead to. Mm. Um, you know, the, how I ended up in, in the international tuition, you know, I said yes, didn't I? Yeah. I honestly thought that message was a scam message. Yeah. I was I wouldn't have said yes mm. if. COVID hadn't kind of just been we hadn't just been coming out of the pandemic and me being really fed up with just things being taken away and just feeling a bit stuck and stagnant and I said yes and now four years later I've got a thriving international business with a team of tutors I'm supporting other tutors help deliver international it's just absolutely mind-blowing now at that point when you're saying yes you don't think, oh, well, if I say yes to this, then it will lead to this, 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 and this. It just all starts with taking that chance, doesn't it, in the first instance. And sometimes it will pay off and sometimes it won't. But I always think it's better to regret something that you have done rather than something that you haven't. Do you um, do you think or what do you think helps identify what to say yes to? Like, so how how do we guard against... The negative side because look we could go oh just say yes just say yes one of my favorite films actually is yes with Jim Carrey have you seen that no oh it's one it's really funny but I think there's a really like big important message in that he just has to say yes to everything basically right. and it goes down a really funny path but it ends up really sort of bittersweet in the middle but it right. works in the end but there's something about that positivity of saying yes that could mean you get taken advantage of yeah. so yeah is there something there, any words of wisdom that we can that we could impart onto others to go, oh, Jane and Richard just said, just say yes to stuff, right? Yeah, we don't want to be sued. Like, this yeah, is exactly. So you, yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's blanket it with, uh, let's keep it nice and safe. How can we, how can we check things out? What's the, 
what would be the parameters of saying yes versus no? I think it's doing your due diligence, first of all. But I really trust my gut instinct a lot, um, which I know isn't very tangible, maybe not all that sensible, but you can generally get a bit of a feeling after you've done your due diligence if you want to Mm. want to do it. Um, I don't know. How about you? What do you do? I'm the same gut. I know this is taking a lot of practice, but there's there is something scientific behind the gut instinct. Right. right. So the way, and it's on a very unconscious level. So your brain is computing certain things that are already known to the brain, but you're not thinking about them yet. And then it starts oh. to kind of spread out through your body. That's when you start to get that whole, oh, I don't feel right. It's a safety thing. So right. it's, it's computing things coming in that you're not seeing yet. You will, but not yet. So always listen to your gut because it is it is there to protect you. Time is a thing for me. Yeah. You don't have to wait ages. Let's say, for example, yeah. you said, you said, oh, I'm not sure about the podcast. So it was a no, 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 but it wasn't an always. It was like a, this isn't a never. This yeah. is a, I'm going to do it at some point. I didn't, didn't know that at the time, but that was what kind of what was going through your head, right? Then it was a yes. Yeah. So when you say no to something, it doesn't mean no, it's gone forever. Often it's like, a, do you know what this isn't the right time right now? Oh, I, I suppose that's idea. being open to that as well because when I said no I actually meant no but then I suppose it's then coming back yeah. good job I said yes in the end isn't it like my whole career based on it. Um, but yeah if I I think it's being open to changing your mind and having that flexibility because and not being afraid to then chase it I suppose like you'd offered it you'd offered it I said no spent a couple of months like kind of you know, not really thinking about it, but then my friend kind of did her thing and I was like, yeah, I'll have a go at that. Mm. Um, but I still had to email you and say yes, or, you know, and then say, I've got an idea. Like, I think there's something in this international tutors who thrive, like in your, your one sentence reply was like, I'm all about collaboration. And then we just kind of started talking from there really, but I still had to have the nerve to send that email I suppose like to and to turn up for it I suppose and show up yeah and show up and do it in the way that you did which was a very high level I think like I said before the like the way that you show up is at a high level and we don't often see that in ourselves because we're just well I'm just Jane and I'm just turning up as Jane and it's like yeah but there's power behind that and when you are being genuine and this is for everybody when you turn up as yourself there is a lot of power behind that. And often, and I've, I know we've would have said this before. I definitely would, would have said it in previous podcasts. We sometimes turn up being the person we think people want to see. Yeah. And then we mask our true, true identity and our value sometimes as well. And then you've got to turn up like that every time. And that's hard work. Mm -hmm. If you just yeah. turn up like yourself, which is really hard to begin with, because you might not have that self-belief yet that that's going to work. So you, you know, compromise in places to try and make it or make you seem like or turn up in the way people will like you. It doesn't work. You've got you've got to turn up as yourself and get rid of. I don't know. There, there, I suppose there's blocks there. I, I, I'm saying like this is where we go and see Claire and we do the tapping and we work it through and we talk and we cry, sob, whatever, whatever you end up doing, because that's quite likely. And you work through it and it's the work on yourself. I You, you said something around. um what did we what, what did we last say, Jane? What did you talk about last? Because I was like, oh, I want to want to go a bit deeper on that. Oh, collaboration. Yeah. Right. This was the most recent thing where I wanted to say yes, but I was really nervous about it because look, the whole idea of growing a Facebook group, helping tutors, creating courses and support was like, okay, this obviously want to start with value, but I also want it to be a business. So there's a protective cloth over it where you go, no, this is just for me. Mm -hmm. I started off. Like, actually, I really wanted to be collaborative, but I didn't quite know how to do it. So that word's always been there. But there were still moments where I'm like, oh, I don't know whether I want this person in the group or I don't know whether I should allow this person in or someone sent me a message. Usually people are way, way ahead. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I would have deemed them as way, way ahead from a business perspective. And so people kind of sat around, like even Sharon, you know, for a while. And I was like, I don't know if I want Sharon because I don't, I, I don't, didn't really know her then. We hadn't connected. Um, Claire Riley was another one. Okay. Sat and I wasn't sure whether this was the right thing or bad thing to do because I didn't know. It's all unknown. 
But there was still this niggle, niggle in the back of my head, like, no, collaboration is the way forward. Actually, what we've got as a as an industry is like this person over here on their own and this person over here. And I felt that there's a way in which we can all include them. Yeah, there needs to be boundaries. Yeah. But if we open up the space, the space becomes stronger. And if you're the person in the space, then it it just builds around that thing. Well, for us, it's tutors who thrive. But saying yes to Sharon or saying yes to Claire, that was quite a big hurdle for me. I was blocked. But making those collaborations has been the best decision um, that we've that we've ever made in terms of reach, friendship, advice. Again, like the same, I suppose the same thing that we're talking about, just being open to the idea. It doesn't mean it has to be this amazing collaboration between two people, but just to know that it's, that you can say yes, or you can go away and think about it and make something like this. It has to be an instant decision. Mm-hmm. You've had a lot I, of things to say yes to, though, over the last year or so. Like, how have you kind of negotiated that? So similar to what you've shared, I, I lean into people because I don't have the answers often. But as a collective space of people, like there's people that I would ask advice from, yourself, usually number one, I'm like, Jane, this has happened. And I'm like, I'm just ranting. I'm just sharing this. Tell me what you think. And often it's just wrapped back up in a way to make it understandable for me. Um, obviously, we I know we both do this, but we invest in business coaching yeah. so, or support. And that and what comes with that is not just the person, but usually the whole community. Mm-hmm. So you're able to lean in and go, look, I'm new. I, it's, I don't know about you, but I still feel quite new to the space. Yeah. I'm still working things out. So I'm like, this has happened. What do I do? Is this something I need to go and think about? What are the main questions? What, what things do I need to sort of put out there so I can be better informed? And then people have been there before you just go, well, you need to think about this, this and this. And go, oh, okay. So many times, I say so many times, I do, I do, um, there are certain people who I don't call as much, but every now and again, I'm like, I know you know the answer to this and I need to share it with you. I need to share this experience because I know you're going to be able to come back with a one sentence answer. And they're like, yes, da, 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 this is how you do it. And, they put, and that's it. That's as far as it goes. I know I feel safe and secure. So it goes back to what you were talking about. Like, Look at your circuit of people. And then make sure you know who you're going to phone or who you listen to, because there's a lot of people out there who would give you advice who have not been there before. And so it, it doesn't hold and shouldn't hold as much weight. It doesn't mean you can't talk about it. Yeah. Because talking about, how often do we say, look, I'm just sharing this because... Don't even need an answer. Yeah. You know, with the voice note. Dumping it here. Yeah, I'm just going to dump it in here because if I don't, I'm going to explode. And it's something yeah. we'll probably have to talk about in a month's time. But right now it's out there. And either, you know, we don't respond because it doesn't need a response or, yeah, I totally get that. I hope you're okay. Finished. Just having that place, I think, is, is really helpful. So, yes, the power of yes is is has the ability to sort of change your path in life 100%. So, Words of wisdom around that is do you do due diligence, ask the right, ask powerful questions, lean into people you know, lean in if you can, lean into a mentor because that's what they're there for. Or people you really trust who are going along the journey with you. Like, for example, I'm really lucky I've got Jane. We can, I, the most days we'd send something, I find, even if it's something really small. Other times it's like massive, like my head's spinning. I've got to tell you this stuff. Like, and then you get it off your chest and then you just move on. And I find that's enough. But yeah, the people around you is really cool. T- I think for me, time, knowing that you don't have to make a decision in the moment. Yes, that's doesn't why the community is so great as well, isn't it? Because people can post there, get the support that they need in the Facebook group and just take their time to then make a decision isn't it and then you, they can decide what, what a yes it what a yes looks like for them because actually it isn't there are a lot of it's not always black and white is it yes no it can be quite gray like you know yes but or there may be required like a degree of compromise or what does yes look like for you and what does what do you want to get out of it really I've got a really good case for that. And that's going to China in September. Like I don't have an international business. So why am I going? 
you know, and so many times I've come back to, oh, is this the right decision? Because I don't, I just still don't know. But I, I think the yes there, it, it's better to go and find out. Let's say yes, let's go and find out. What's the worst that could happen? Again, what 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 did I do around that? Yes, it's like I, I spoke to John Nichols. I spoke to yourself, to two people who I trust. Yeah. I know John's not going to take me down a path that's going to you know, destroy the company, but I know you're going to be super honest. And everybody else, like there, there's still no guarantees anything positive is yeah. going to come of it if I'm a business sense. But it's a grey area. It's not a definite, yes, this is going to work, but I'd rather come back and realize that in mid-October and go, oh, I didn't really work, yeah. but I feel better that I went because of I got this, this, and this out of it. Well, or I could be sat there mid-October going, oh, I wish I'd gone. Yeah. And also, like you you never really know what you're saying yes to. Like, so if we take the China example, like actually, there might not be any tuition contracts that materialize from that trip, but I'll be spending 10 days with some incredible business owners making connections you just never know like I'll be able to meet some of the contacts that I have already in Beijing and Shanghai like it may not be the thing that I'm expecting to happen Mm. if that makes sense you know I said yes to coming on your podcast I didn't say yes to running a course and us becoming friends and colleagues but that has been a I really appreciate that in your your kind of <laughs> the friendship that we have. Don't get yeah. me wrong, but I didn't. You just can't anticipate what what that's going to lead to, can you? You know, it it just is the chain reaction um, of things. I, I gave the example of me sitting down next in Atomicon, didn't I? The lady next to me was lovely and smiled, and then it turns out now that woman's my business coach, um, and it's been brilliant. Mm. But that all started with me saying yes to Atomicon because you told me I should go Mm. you know it it is just that chain reaction and things maybe not turning out the way that you expect but I think when you're open to something generally you'll see the positives of it as well so in the last in the last podcast I think it was the last one we spoke about that basketball video yeah where you're focusing on how many times they bounce or pass the basketball and then that the person in the gorilla suit walks through but you don't notice the gorilla suit the first time around Put that together with um, the idea of saying yes and then noticing the right thing. So the focus is so important. Like, so if you are focused on trying to find good opportunities, you're probably more likely to, to, that they'll appear in front of you. So it's manifestation 101 really, isn't it? Yes. And I'm going to marry that up with what Drew Povey was talking about at the conference, the idea of that positive language and then the spiral upwards to positive I'm going to call them consequences I can't remember what they were there was lang positive language action and I know there was a third and fourth but the last one was like the outcome the positive outcome if you're using positive language and your mind is open to finding these opportunities you're manifesting that whole spiral up you're far more likely to want to say yes to the opportunities that you're noticing so imagine that like you're not opening yourself up to the grid or to the person walking across the screen you're just looking at the, like the mundane passing, you're not seeing the fun stuff or the good opportunities that are walking across. It's the same in business. So some of this might come down to how you're in a story, like what's going on in your head. So if you're constantly like, I can't find anything, nothing good's happening, that downward spiral towards a negative act to negative consequences, a negative outcome. Oh yeah, nothing happens for me. I never win anything. I never get to do this. And then you get to the fact, well, yeah, that's now true. Yes. Yeah. Whereas if you can just go, I am open. Mm-hmm. If you start there, you know, I am open. I might still feel a bit negative, but I'm opening up the idea that good things can happen and there's going to be good opportunities. It's not magic. It's not the secret. I'm not talking about you manifesting like, I want a Ferrari, I want a Ferrari. You open your eyes, there's a Ferrari. That might happen, but probably not. But just to go, I reckon that I can speak to five parents this week. I'm going to speak to five parents this week about tuition in September. I'm going to open up the idea that five parents really want to talk to me about tuition. And you're going to just keep it completely open. You might do a Facebook post, whatever it may be, but you don't know where those five people are going to come from. And every time you're out, you're going to see a parent. I think it might be them. It might be them. It might be them. You're just going to keep it like that the whole time. I bet you chat to five people, even by accident. I mean, I'd be peering over the apples going, do you want to talk about tuition? And then, <laughs> no, 
whatever it may look like, just so you can get to five, but you're opening up the world to it and the possibility. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's always for me linked into the action as well. So yes, the inner voice, all of those things, really important, but take the action, whether it is having a random conversation with someone or just being noticed or notice small little clues that someone's ready. Well, we, we don't know. We don't know yet, but just open up your mind to the possibility that good things can happen. And I think they're more likely to. Absolutely. Absolutely. And like growth mindset as well. Like even if it doesn't work out first time to just learn the lesson and then move on. And that's, that's really important as well, isn't it? It's um, it's just how you kind of free frame things and, and see even if it is a no it could be a yes in disguise you know something something will come along at some point i wonder if the power of no as well is yeah, something to yeah, talk yeah. about later yeah. because you have to know what yes means you really need to know what no means to mm-hmm. a certain degree like if you're saying no because it's about being protective of time or you're saying no because you know, you're committed in a different way that would take you away and saying yes would mean you're going away from your values or the direction you want your business to take as long as you know what questions to ask of yourself mm-hmm. it makes life a bit it, ma- it makes life a bit easier either way but I think the power of no can be quite good as well yeah. I know we're gonna we're focused on the power of yes because it's really positive but how many times have you said yes to something and gone afterwards oh, probably probably should have said no to that you know, and I'm sure lots of people will go, yep, definitely. Yeah. Um, so the power of those are also something to consider at another time. Uh, Jane, is there anything else you want to add to this? No. We're all well, good. I feel the yeah. same. Um, yeah. I'd love to hear what people have said yes to that changed their life yes. and yeah. changed, their, changed, changed their kind of pathway in some way in a really positive sense. And just because we said it, what have you said no to that you've gone, thank goodness I said no? You know, because I bet there's also stories like that. Uh, thank you, Jane. It's always good to share a space with you. And you do. Thank you very much. I'll speak to you all soon. Bye.